We've been talking a lot about these cheap Chinese emulation handhelds as of late, and a lot of people do seem to enjoy them. There's plenty of different price ranges, features, benefits, pros and cons between all of them, and we've talked about quite a few. I do have a playlist if you wanna check that out, but today we're gonna to be taking a look at one of the newest offerings out of China, the Retro Game 300. A lot of people have been hitting me up. When are you gonna take a look at this thing? We want to hear your thoughts on it. And today, that's what you're gonna be getting. So is this gonna be the perfect device? Is this the one that beats out the rest of them? Stay tuned and find out because I do have some things to say about this, both positive and negative. So we've looked at a lot of these, the BitBoys, you know, I kinda, I have my feelings on those. They're the lower priced versions, but I do have these LDK games out for a reason. And the reason is, is that essentially this, the retro game and the LDK game are the same device, but not quite exactly. They do share the same CPU, the JZ476OB MIPS, uh, 528 megahertz to 740 megahertz, 128 uh, DDR2 RAM, and they do both have an internal memory of 16 gigabytes through a micro SD card. Uh, this one did come with an external 32 gigabyte, totally soldier boyed up, just like they usually do with a shiz ton of games. So, hey, thank you, China. Thank you, soldier boy, for, you know, being the name of, uh, you know, games on devices that are not licensed. All right, whatever. Um, but yeah, very similar uh, design as far as that goes. They are using a CPU that's, you know, 10 years old or so. Um, the main difference is going to be form factor, the kind of screen that's being used, the buttons, a few other little things. Um, but one of the biggest differences is gonna be the battery. This has an 1800 milliamp hour battery, whereas these have about a thousand milliamp hour batteries. So that's gonna be the biggest thing. Performance wise, these are gonna be very similar. Take a quick look at the box. Uh, just explains, it does have a tempered glass screen. Uh, it says that the, the screen is three inches by three, three by 320 by 480. So people are saying 960 by 480. I've been hearing a lot of conflicting information. Uh, about sub pixels, non-standard pixel sizes with the screen that's used um, and how 960 by 480 is, is quite a bit misleading and it's just marketing jargon and that it's really just a 320 by 480 screen, which is what I tend to believe. Tells you what comes in the box and there are a few colors, gray, white, uh, transparent blue that I thought looked really good and black transparent, which is one of the standard colors a lot of these devices use. Uh, so this, before we jump really into it, uh, this was provided to me by Handheld Obsession on Instagram. Really cool dude. Uh, he has a lot of content on his website and his Instagram. He does some giveaways here and there. Talks about handhelds, does his takes on things, uh, you know, reviews, comparisons. Not just these kind of things, but also original handhelds and restorations. Just all sorts of cool stuff. So definitely appreciative of Handheld Obsession. Check him out. Link will be in the description. But let's go ahead and open this bitch up and take a look at her. So, here it is. Now, I am gonna say one thing before we really get into it. Here's a little, just a quick size comparison uh, compared to everything else, or just compared to these shaped devices. Obviously, it's the bigger boy here. Um, I do have my GPI case right here for another comparison if you kinda wanna see that. Uh, yeah, a little smaller um, as far as form factor, but Definitely a lot bigger uh, than the rest of these. And in my opinion, one of the most comfortable out of any of these handhelds that are out there right now. So one cool feature um, that some people may look at as, as a plus, some people may as a minus, um, especially if you haven't embraced USB-C, but it is charged up with USB-C. I actually thought that was really cool. Uh, so they do have that headphone jack down there. Uh, our Soldier Boy micro SD card, 32 gigabytes, what it shipped with. Our Omron switches for our L and R buttons. Oh my God, these feel comfortable. And they click. Clicky, clicky. Uh, we do have our volume on the side. Up is actually volume up, so that's a good thing. Uh, kind of small, uh, kind of almost can't feel it, but it's there and it works. What else do we got? We have our battery. This battery is definitely bigger and size to the battery that comes 
with the LDK game, and it's almost double the capacity, like I said. So there's that. The internal memory is underneath that, 16 gigabytes. Has your firmware, your kernel, all that good stuff. The buttons feel good. The D-pad is, you know, and not perfect, but good. Very similar to, to what's on these. Uh, the buttons feel fine. They press nicely. Our select and start, our brightness and mode, all that good stuff. So there is that. The one thing that I have to just get out of the way. Oh, while I'm pi powering this on, I do have some light bleeding on the side right there. I uh, don't know how noticeable that is, but it's 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 faint. It's there. I can notice it. Um, but with these devices both being the same, the performance is going to be pretty much the same. Uh, if you put the same type of custom firmware on there, this just has stock on it at the moment. Uh, we may visit the custom stuff later. But the one thing I do want to point out um, after I looked at these is even with, you know, they have five points of brightness adjustment. Uh, the screen on this looks a hell of a lot better. The LDK game screen and even like the, the pocket go screen looks better than this, even though this is a bigger screen. Uh, this is using a TFT display, uh, whereas like the pocket goes using an IPS screen. So yeah, these, it's just a shame because the, the other issue, I'm going to put up a screenshot because I don't know how well this is going to come up on video playing games like eight bit. Uh, or even higher than that, you know, 16-bit games. If the screen has a solid color on it, it's very apparent. This screen is grainy as a mofo. I, it's one of the most distracting things out of this. I have There's no screen tearing whatsoever. You don't have any screen tearing to look forward to with this thing. Everything plays fairly well. You're not getting Dreamcast, Nintendo 64. You're getting some limited compatibility with uh, PlayStation, for example. I'm going to play some PlayStation here. Just want to give you guys an idea of what we're getting ourselves into. Um, PlayStation hit and miss, just going to really depend, but a lot of the games play fairly well. I do have the FPS CPU usage up there. Uh, some games, 3D games in particular, FPS is going to dip around and, and move around a bit. Uh, CPU usage can max out. Uh, everything, you know, for the most part, like a game like this, let me just load my save state. Um, you know, a game like this, it's it's not too bad. Everything, I think, uh, plays fairly well. Oh, shit. Oh, you're in here trying to get me. But, yeah, like this game, 3D, old school 3D game, is playing fairly well, looking pretty good. Uh, like I said, the frame rate's going to dip down a little bit, but for an old school game like this, it's not a huge deal. But definitely keep that kind of stuff in mind. Oh shit, why'd I, why'd I throw that? <laughs> um, but there's that. 2D games on PlayStation play very well, like the fighters and all that good stuff. Sometimes it is hard, like with some systems, going to depend on what buttons you press to uh, access the, the menu to quit. Uh, sometimes I notice with this, pressing select and start doesn't always do it. Uh, I don't know if it's the responsiveness of the buttons, because some systems it works, PlayStation for some reason, uh, gives me a little bit of a hard time. Um, but a lot of these games like Silent Hill plays okay, frame rate starts dipping, CPU usage gets high. Uh, Marvel Super Heroes versus Street Fighter plays fairly well. Let me show some of that. And with games like this, with the graininess of the screen, it doesn't really... Uh, pop out at me as much, even with some of the PlayStation 3D games. It's more so those old school 8-bit and 16-bit games that, you know, have very still sprites, uh, still backgrounds, where the graininess just comes out at me, and it's very distracting. It's something that, if I hadn't seen, like, you know, how decent the screens look on these, um, or the Pocket Go, for example, I think those screens are decent. Just, you know, the, the screen tearing issues on the, the BitBoy line. Um, but as far as like how things look, you know, if, if I wasn't accustomed to that with all these other devices, I wouldn't notice the graininess as much on this, but that was the main thing that popped out to me and, and really struck me odd was how grainy the screen is. It just makes me think like, you know, they, they make these things, uh, you know, especially they're using really old components, but they, hey, they, they work for, you know, what we're trying to do here. 
But it just makes me think, you know, with how many of these things keep coming out, is that what the idea is, is to use whatever the cheapest crap components are that they can get, like, in bulk, uh, just so they can, like, you know, double dip, triple dip, quadruple dip, and, and release a bunch of other revisions? Uh, you know, I'm sure there's another retro game coming out soon. It's just apparent that's the kind of thing they do. Uh, BitBoy's popular with that, but really haven't been improving much there. Uh, so, I mean, that's kind of... That's how I'm looking at this is, you know, why couldn't they just put a decent screen in here? doesn't look too bad with a game like this, though. So, I mean, that I wouldn't even say that's nitpicky. It's just pointing out, like, hey, the this, this screen is grainy. Like, what the hell's up with that, you know? Uh, but a lot of other things, like Game Boy Advance, things play very well. The performance is the same. I um, don't know why I went into this game. But the performance is the same, essentially, as the LDK game, because it's the same device, just with some differences. The USB-C, the awesome-ass shoulder buttons being a little bit bigger. I really dig this. I just wish the screen was a little bit better. Um, the one thing I do want to point out is the viewing angle from left to right isn't too much of an issue, but once you start dipping down, I'm trying to line this up so you can see. Once you start dipping down just slightly, that screen just dims. That's the one thing with these cheap-ass displays um, is you kind of have to, bam, have it straight up in your eyes. Otherwise, you start losing detail and the screen just dims away. So there's that. Game Boy Advance performs fairly well. Super Nintendo, uh, the same thing. It's just going to be some of those special chip games, uh, you know, the FX chip games, stuff like that, that you may run into some issues. So keep that in mind. Compatibility is not 100% with most of these systems. Uh, you know, most, you know, the earlier stuff, the 8-bit stuff, and some of the earlier handhelds like Game Boy uh, and Game Gear, you, should, you shouldn't have any issues with, especially, you know, I've tested quite a bit of games and haven't found too many problems with those. Game Boy Advance, same thing. Uh, and for me, it's like this, I don't, it, it's, it's really grainy. I, I don't know how to, how to display that. You know, my eyeballs are seeing graininess compared to all the other devices out there. But it's like this, to me, just feels the best. Uh, the size is perfect for me. Uh, it's just that nitpick on the screen. But not every game that I play uh, bothers me with that. Uh, some of the Sega Genesis stuff definitely doesn't. PlayStation stuff. Uh, playing like NES definitely does because there's a lot of uh, still images. Listen to that. Sega coming through perfect. Sega Genesis working great. No screen tearing is a huge thing. Uh, they did that right with this one, with, with the screen and how everything's set up. So that's definitely a plus. But there you go. I mean, we could be testing games for days with this thing. If there's anything specific that you really want me to take a look at, let me know. Um, maybe we could do a follow-up, you know, with a custom firmware or something like that. We could test out some other games. But I just want to cover some of the basics. Show a little bit of PlayStation running because PlayStation does work. It's just not going to be everything. Some things get really slow. Like, I tested out Gran Turismo. Um, and that game plays, but it suffers from, you know, a lot of uh, frame drops. And uh, it just kind of gets a little sluggish here and there. So... Definitely some of the more demanding PlayStation games are going to have issues. 2D games, not so much. So definitely keep that in mind. Don't buy this thing because you want to play PlayStation solely. Let me get out of that. Um, the L and R buttons work fine. Scrolling through the menu. And they feel great. Such So beautiful that they used Omron switches. Love that. So there you go. My final thoughts on this device is that it's definitely going in the right direction as far as these handhelds go, but the screen's not perfect by any means. Kind of seems like a step back, even though it is a bigger screen. I do dig that, but the graininess using a TFT display instead of an IPS screen uh, is definitely going to be a con for some. Uh, the graininess is just really going to be more apparent with those older games or games that don't have a lot of textures going on. Because uh, a game like this, playing Quake 2, uh, fairly smooth, with all the textures on the walls and everything going on here, the graininess of the screen just kind of bleeds into it so it's not as noticeable. But 
I do like this device. I do like it more than any of the, the other ones I have right now. Uh, if the LDK game was in this form factor, that would be my favorite, uh, you know, with the display that it uses. Don't like the viewing angle where you just barely start tilting it and it disappears, as you can see. That's bothersome for sure. But overall, for $60, it's hard to beat right now. But we all know a new version will be out next week, most likely. But hey, just wanted to share my thoughts on this thing. Uh, I'm digging it, you know, but it's not going to be for everyone. But hey, really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me today, taking a look at the RG Retro Game 300. Can't wait for the 400, the 500, the 600 to come out. So with that said, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, bye bye and boom. Sneak that thumb up in there. Thumbs up. Peace out. Bye.